Hi, I'm Claudia Fonts, and I'll be reading from Unworthy Republic, my book about Indian removal in the 1830s. And here's the context for this passage. In the spring of 1838, the U.S. Army expelled nearly 15,000 Cherokees from their homelands in Georgia and herded them into camps across the border in Tennessee and Alabama, where they awaited deportation. So this passage describes the aftermath in Georgia. Throughout the region, houses stood empty of residents, and the objects of everyday life rested in place. A fiddle, chairs, a bed, a spinning wheel, a cooking pot, a bag of dried fruit, a playing horn. But this eerie absence of people was only temporary. Troops stole much of the Cherokee's property, and work hands followed soon after to collect what remained for auction by the federal government. John Dawson bought four axes that belonged to Talisca, tools that the planter probably turned over to his nine slaves. <clears throat> Mr. Sloan purchased Chewy's fiddle. Mr. McSpadden bought Crabgrass's canoe. John Oxford purchased Amatiska's pot, and Miss Goddard bought Soap's bed. U.S. citizens moved into Cherokee houses, slept in their beds, and ate out of their pots. The occupiers used sheep shears, hoes, and fishing spears, augers, baskets, and fiddles that still bore the handprints of the original owners. The irrigation of Cherokee things, as bizarre as it was, went without comment in the Southern press. Thanks.